What's up? We live. I just came from the coffee store. I just came from the coffee shop. So I got me a nice cup of coffee. I got the medium joint. Medium coffee, cream and sugar. And then they had the buy. If you get a medium coffee, you get a donut for a dollar. So I got the donut too. I got the old fashioned joint. So it's right here. Let me go in here and get that. And I'm going to be right back. Stay right there. Yeah, uh, who that right there? Rod D. Rod D. Rod D got the membership. Rod D got the membership. Jamel, what up? Rod D got the membership. All right, so I got my donut right there. Let me, uh, let me get my coffee. My, my arm itching right there. Yo, Jamel, what up? Everybody coming in, everybody coming in. You see the hoodie? Shout out to everybody that bought hoodies. I just came from the post office. I mailed off all of the hoodies. Washington, D.C., New Jersey, Queens, New York, London. And where did the other one go? Where did the other one go? One right over here in Jersey. I mailed everybody's hoodies out, man. Thank you for purchasing. Hold on, let me get my coffee. Let me get my coffee. All right, so we here, we live. Let me move the camera back. Let me move the joint back a little bit. Check me out. The train coming. Look at the train right there. You see the train? Check me out. Check me out. I got the train in my video. R.H. R.H. Shout out to my nigga R.H. Vancouver represent. Over there, Vancouver. I got the train in my video. My train in my video better than your train. My train better than your train. R.H., thank you for the, uh, for the super chat joint. Look at the coffee. Who that right there? That's another member right there. Roland Lee. Roland Lee got the green name. He in St. Louis. St. Louis like probably over that way right there. Got the, got the, got the donut. I've been eating clean, man. So I can eat one of these. I've been, I've been eating clean. You know what I'm saying? I've been eating clean. So listen. Subscribe to the channel. I got some more hoodies. I got some more hoodies right here. Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. How many I got left? I got two left. I got two left. Got two left. Y'all better hurry up and get them. I got two left. They $200 a piece, though. They $200 a piece. That might be a little too strong for you. That might be a little too strong for you because you unemployed. You unemployed. You don't work. You unemployed. Your, wealth, your, your, your welfare running out. Your unemployment check finna run out. You might not be able to afford no hoodie like this. This hoodie for the players. This hoodie is for the players whose self-perception is high. Your self-perception gotta be high. Sean, why all your merch cost so much? Why you sell your books for $35? Why you sell your Scullies for 50? Why you sell your hoodies for 200? Cause my brand and my self-perception of my brand is high. See what I'm saying? Your shit low. Your self-perception low. You understand? 
you buy hoodies from the gas station that they sell in the back by the toenail clippers. You understand? That's where you get your hoodies from. $14 hoodie, right? Or you go to Dollar Tree and get you a Scully for $2.99. You understand? Your self-perception low. Your money low. You don't work. You don't work. You don't want to work. You don't want to get a job. None of that. You just want to smoke weed all day and play video games. That's the kind of life that you live. The individual must control the deepest perception of himself, lest he be overwhelmed by the forces of negativity and defeat in those people that are around him. Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. The individual, you, me, him, her, them, the individual must control the deepest perception of himself. Otherwise, he will be controlled by the negativity and defeat in those people that he surrounds himself with. Listen, you have to, your self-perception will determine your happiness or lack thereof. Your self-perception, how you view yourself, will determine your advancement in life or your lack of advancement, right? Your self-perception of yourself, how you view yourself, how you see yourself, how you think of yourself will determine how high you fly or how low you stay. That's up to you. That's up to you. That's up to you. Nobody in the world can put a self-perception on you and say, yo, you perceive yourself this way. Unless you allow it. You are in total control of how you view yourself. You are in total control of what you think about yourself. And conversely, we already know that the thought is the seed and the emotion is the fruit. So whatever you think, that's how you're going to feel. If you think uh, malice and, and, and cunning and deceit, you will feel deceitful you will feel malicious right if you think sadness if you think uh destitute you will feel sad and you will feel lack right if you think power if you think force if you think strength if you think courage if you think bravery your self-esteem and your confidence will be you will feel that whatever you think that's how you feel Whatever you think, that's how you feel. That's why I don't watch no TV. I don't watch no TV. I don't watch no TV. And I'm real careful about the music that I listen to. You understand? Because I love music like everybody else. But I'm real conscious about the music that I listen to because I, I understand the direct correlation to whatever I'm listening to whatever I'm feeding me, right? Because music has the ability to transform. Music can make you be, there's certain music that can make you calm, there's certain music that can make you violent, there's certain music that can make you happy, there's certain music that can depress you. Music has the ability and it's a universal language to determine how you think and how you feel, 100%, 100%. So I'm real cognizant of the music I listen to, right? 
I don't watch no TV. I don't watch no TV. I watch sports every once in a while. Like now that the football is getting down to the end, I watch the games like that right there. I watch the Mets. When Tiger Woods was playing, whenever he played, I would watch. But to just be sitting around in front of the two, watching TV, letting them get in my brain, never that. Never that. Never that. No. 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 I would much rather sit in my own solitary loneliness, right? And in my own solitary quiet, right? And let my thought and let my thoughts be born, live, and die a natural death on their own. On their own. When I was a little boy, when I was a child, and even into my adult years, when I was in my 20s and 30s, and I had a beard and mustache, but I still was a child. Get him, Sean. Get him, Sean. It's hot. It's hot. What I'm going to say might burn your hand. MZ, I see you. When I was in my 20s and 30s, and I had a mustache, I had a beard, but I was still a little boy. Check me out. I'm talking about me. I don't know about him. I don't care about my man. I don't care about her. I just care about me. This is a selfish world. You understand? This is a selfish program. You got to care about yourself. When I was a little boy, I allowed myself to be influenced and moved around like pieces on a chessboard, right? By other people's perception of me. I felt their perception of me was more important than my own. Check me out. Check me out. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. When I went to church, I wanted to be like them. When I went to school, I wanted to be like them. When I was smoking weed, I wanted to be like them. When I was sniffing blow, I wanted to be like them. When I watched TV, I wanted to be like the Godfather. When I watched TV, I wanted to be like Al Pacino. I wanted to be everybody but me. Check me out. My self-esteem was low. My self-perception was low. I'm talking about me. My self-esteem was low. Down here where yours at now. Your shit low. My self-perception was low. My self-confidence was low. My honesty was low. My truth was low. My faith was low. My belief in myself was low because I based my whole existence on what other people thought about me. Check me out, Zane. I see you, Zane. But I don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. It's snowing out here. Y'all see the snow? Look at that snow. I don't do that no more. Man, I could care less what any of y'all think of me. I could care less. I could care less. And I keep my self-perception sky high. I keep my self-perception up here. I don't keep it down here. I keep my self-perception up there. I keep myself in a constant state of arrogance. I keep Sean G in a constant state of conceit. I keep Sean G's ego super high. Heretofore and conversely, and as a result of, and henceforth, my self-perception got to be high. If I do that, if I do that, my self-perception has got to remain high. And that's where I need it at. I need it high. Right? Because when my arrogance and when my conceit kick in and when my ego kick in, 
I'm able to decipher and distinguish and set demarcation lines that I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that over there neither. Now, I'm not going over there. I ain't going over there. No, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that no more. I'm too good for that. I'm better than that. What? Yeah, no, nah, I'm better than that. So this way, I keep myself on a straight path. I don't care if you like me or not. I really don't. I really don't. I want you to. It's cool if you do, but if you don't, then fuck it. I like me. I like me. It took me a lot of years. It took me a lot of years to learn that. It took me a lot of years to learn that. See, I was a little boy well into my 20s. Get him, Sean. Get him, Sean. I was a little boy well into my 30s. Get him, Sean. Don't, don't, don't hold back on him, Sean. Don't cut him no slack. Don't cut him no slack. Don't cut him no slack. I thought like a child well into my 20s and 30s. You understand? I didn't grow up until later in life because I had nobody to really, you understand, teach me about self-perception. I learned bullshit like the Boston Tea Party and George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, all this, you understand, and, 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 and uh, what else? Uh, you know, just nothing, nothing. And it wasn't until I began to self-reach and do my own research because I'm very inquisitive. I'm a very inquisitive man. You understand? Fast guys, what's up? I'm a very inquisitive man, right? I'm very curious. Hmm? And I love information. I love knowledge. I'm very smart. I've, I've been intelligent my whole life. So I love to read books and I love to be smart, right? You get a lot of pussy when you smart, a lot of pussy when you smart, right? And I began to self reach and um, try to figure out what was wrong with me. Sean, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, man? Sean, what's wrong with you, man? What's wrong? You keep blowing up your life. You keep destroying yourself. You keep, you keep, every time you make progress, you knock yourself back. You, 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 you just keep, you keep destroying yourself. What's the matter with you? What's wrong? I mean, on a deep level, I had to ask myself these questions. Why do you, why do you make decisions that you make, Sean? Why do you behave the way that you behave, Sean? Why is your judgment skewed? Why are you always trying to get over? Why are you always trying to, you understand? And as I did the research, as I did the research on me, because I don't care nothing about you. I don't care nothing about them. I don't care nothing about them. Them, 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 nobody else. Out of all 8 billion of y'all, I don't care about none of y'all except me and little Sean. That's it. That's it. That's it. Because you don't care about me. No, you don't. No, you don't. You like my content, but you don't care about me. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if I was to fall off, which I ain't, if I was to fall off, y'all wouldn't come to my rescue and be like, yo, Sean, what up, man? Let me help you. you know what y'all say? Look at that dumb nigga. That nigga had over 100,000 subscribers on two of his YouTube channels. That nigga begging for change under the bridge. Look at that nigga right there. And then y'all will be taking pictures of me, video with your phone, and posting it on your Instagram, trying to build you a platform, dissing me. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. That's why I don't trust you. That's why I don't trust you. And I never allow myself to believe that, you understand, people care about me. I care about me. Me and little Sean, that's it. That's it. And I had to say, Sean, what's wrong with you? 
Why do you say yes when you want to say no? Because your self-perception low. Why do you laugh at jokes, people's jokes that ain't funny? Because your self-perception low. Your self-perception low, your self-esteem low. Why do you hang around people that you don't trust, you know? Because your self-perception low, your self-esteem low. I had to ask myself all these questions in my lonely moments, in my lonely hour, by myself when I was in pains and I couldn't goddamn stand myself anymore. I couldn't stand being myself the way that I was another day. And I had to ask myself, look at the snow. I got snow in my video. My snow better than your snow. Don't nobody else got no snow in their video like me. I got the fly snow. Sean, why? Why? You in and out of jail. Why? And I had to look at myself and and check me out i had to grab myself by the shirt so nigga come in i had to do this to myself man i had to do this to myself i had to check myself i had to dig myself i had to ask myself yo what's wrong what's wrong yeah my self-perception was low. But I got it together. I got it together. And uh, my self-perception is high. I have a high opinion of myself. have a very high opinion of myself as I should I don't believe there's a, any man in the world that's better than me nowhere show him to me when it come down to betting on betting on me I'm pushing all my chips in the middle I've seen me survive things. I've seen me go through things. I've seen me overcome obstacles. I've seen me go through adversity. I've seen me deal with failure. I've seen me come back from defeat. I've seen me come back from catastrophe. I've seen me just fuck my life all the way up and put it back together and make comeback. So with that, with me seeing that, I believe in me to the to the nth degree, man, to the strength. I believe in me, man, to the strength, to the strength, to the strength, to the strength. I don't, I'm not, man, I, man, I don't believe it's a human being on this planet better than me, man. That's how I think. That's how I think. That's how I think. I'm arrogant. I'm arrogant and conceited like that. Yes, I am. I tell you to your face. You see it. I just don't believe that, you understand, somebody could do anything that I can't do. I just don't think like that. I'm a winner, man. I'm a winner. I got them win. I lose and I win. Yes, I lose. You got to lose to know how to win. You got to lose. Any motherfucker telling you that they don't never lose, they ain't never took no L, fake ass. Get your ass up out of here. Shut up, man. Stop that. Don't do 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 that. 
you got to go through adversity in order to get stronger. You got to go through adversity in order to get stronger. You got to lose in order to know how to win. Yes, you do. Man, you control your own self-perception, man. You control your own self-perception, man. You could decide at any moment while you watching this live or when you get off this live or next week or next month or two hours from now, you could say to yourself like, yo, I ain't perceiving me like that no more. I ain't perceiving me like that no more. I'm gonna perceive myself like this. And the thing about it, the thing about it, right? Y'all can't learn none of this shit what I'm teaching you at Yale, Harvard, Morris Brown, Morehouse, Harvard, Stanford, University of Chicago, Oxford, MIT. No school was teaching you what I'm teaching you right now. You can make a decision that I'm gonna perceive myself in a glorious light. Boom, you make that decision. I ain't doing, I'm not perceiving myself as weak no more. I'm not perceiving myself as stupid no more. I'm gonna perceive myself this way, right? And you have that power. You have that power to do that. And in the course of you changing your perception of yourself, in the course of you um, exercising the negative perception you have from yourself over there and, and, and kicking out that perception over there and coming with the new joint, which is more advantageous for you, right? And more fortuitous for you. While you doing that, because you persisted in them negative behaviors for so long, while you trying to do the new thing, them joints will come back. Them joints will come back out of the blue because those were your default perceptions for so long. You thought that way for so long. You thought that way for so long. So when you try something new, the old joint's gonna try to come back. And then that's when you have to polarize your mind, right? And you have to use your ego to raise up your consciousness and polarize that joint up here and let them two negative joints go underneath. It talks about that in the Kabbalion, the seven hermetic principles. You understand? And when you fall off, because you will, because I did, when I was trying to change, when I was trying to grow up, right? And them old joints came back. I said, nah, Sean. I said, nah, Sean. Block them out. Stay here. Hocus pocus, keep the focus. Hocus pocus, keep the focus. And you got to stay on this new course. You got to stay on the new course. And it take time. It ain't no motherfucking two, three days, nigga. You gonna change your perception of yourself. You have been having this self-perception for 17 years or for 31 years and you think, goddamn, in six days you gonna change. Nah, it take months, years. It take a lot of time and it take a lot of practice and you have to be diligent. You have to be vigilant, right? And you have to be deliberate and concentrate on who you be trying to come, who you be trying to become. I know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Because I did it. I did it myself. I did it my own self. I did it my own self. Huh? Y'all don't want no hoodie like that. You got the blue. That's a blue hoodie. Everybody in the world got a blue hoodie. What? Yeah, your hoodie black. Everybody got a black hoodie. My shit, look at the color of this. My hoodie better than your hoodie. Yes, it is. You can't afford this hoodie, man. This hoodie, $200, man. You got $200 for a hoodie? Yeah, all right, well, stay over there then with your black and blue. Everybody got a black and blue hoodie. Stay over there. You understand? So, you are the master of your destiny. You are the sole controller 
of your life and time is running out. Holistic love, I see you. I see you. Time is running out. Time is running out. Time is running out. Make use of your time. Be conscientious of your time. Be careful about time. They talk about that in the art of war. They talk about that in the art of war. Swan Tzu says that good generals are careful about time. They're careful about time. The sooner you change the way you look at yourself, the sooner your life change. And it's up to you. Can't nobody do that. Can't nobody take that from you. If you say you perceive yourself as an astronaut, right? Or if you foundational black American as an Afro-not, if you perceive yourself as an Afro-not or astronaut, or you perceive yourself as a race car driver, or you perceive yourself as a uh, train conductor, then no one could take that from you, man. Nobody could take that from you. Nobody could take that from you, right? And once you perceive yourself a certain way, nobody can control you. Nobody can control you no more. That's why they use the television and the music to keep people in a hypnotic trance, right? Beat you down with bad information, beat you down with fear, beat you down with, with, with worry, beat you down with depressive news in order to break your will so that they can control you. But when your ego is high and you arrogant and conceited and you know who you are and you know your perception of yourself and you know your worth, you know your value, you know your self-esteem, man, they can't control you. And imagine if it was 8 billion people like that, this planet would be, the vibration on this planet would be so high, the shit might explode, man. But a lot of y'all have allowed yourselves to be receptive to other people's, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, receptive to other people's, um, what's the word you're looking for, Sean? Incoming, incoming uh, information. See, that's the difference between feminine and masculine. In the Kabbalion, go get the Kabbalion and read it. In the Kabbalion, you got seven principles. Mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. The seventh principle is gender. Look at my train right there. Look at my train. Look at my train right there. The seventh principle is gender. And gender the way it's broken down in the Kabbalion, and my back itching, is you have a masculine principle and you have a feminine principle. And every living thing has both of these principles simultaneously. Me, Sean G, as the masculine male that I am, I have a feminine principle and a, and a uh, masculine principle inside of you. Everybody does. The most docile, meek and petite woman has both a masculine and feminine gender. The feminine gender is the, the male gender is objective, the female is passive, subjective. Wait a minute, get it right, Sean. The masculine principle is assertive. The feminine principle is passive. The masculine principle is objective. The feminine principle is subjective. 
The masculine principle is concerns itself with putting out uh um damn I'm forgetting the word man damn, I wrote this shit down I copy I damn near copied the whole Kabayan down when I was in prison I damn near copied the whole thing by hand with a pen the masculine principle is concerned with putting out um putting out waves the feminine principle is primarily concerned with receiving right so what was i saying what was i going with that hold on i'm gonna get it i got off track because i was trying to figure out that word i was i can't figure that word out this is where i was at i know where i was at i don't smoke weed my mind is clear I got the clear dome. Niggas that smoke weed, they forget everything. Where my keys at? What? Oh, what? I had an appointment. What time? Huh? Huh? I gotta go pick up from. Yeah, what? Huh? The feminine principle is 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 concerned with receiving information, and the masculine principle puts out information. A lot of y'all have, as I was too at one point, um, especially if you was raised by a single mother like i was you know you can't help but to pick up feminine tendencies if that's how you was raised if there was no father around and a lot of y'all live your life receiving you leave you receive you you live your life in a feminine posture by receiving stimuli there we go the masculine puts out it's because we're putting out stimulus and the feminine receives stimulus i knew i was gonna figure it out and a lot of y'all live your lives in position in a feminine uh feminine state of constantly receiving information cnn msnbc youtube instagram TikTok, netflix hulu you just constantly receiving stimuli and unbeknownst to you right if your consciousness is not high enough you become you become affected by that you become impacted by that right and, and all it does in most cases it, 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 it polarizes you in a state of worry in a state of fear and you become useless you become useless but if you're if you and see you got that choice too once you understand the principle right and once you accept that you have both and then you really dig deeper and you examine yourself and you understand your patterns of behavior and your patterns of thought of when you go into this feminine posture and when you go into this masculine posture then you can you can um correct and eradicate the overabundance of the feminine state inside of you and then you can you can bring that over to the masculine side and you can learn to polarize yourself on the masculine tip but you do need even if you a hardcore dude you do need the the feminine quality because you have to be able to listen and to receive stimuli right but that's where the masculinity comes in you got to learn to decipher you know what to keep what to throw away you understand you got to learn to keep and what to throw away yes sir come what up but your percept your self-perception man you could start this afternoon man you can start right now you could change the way you see yourself you could change the way you see yourself man but you got to accept yourself too man you gotta accept all of that about you. What you don't like, what you like, what you hate, what you love. You gotta really look at yourself and ask yourself, man. You gotta really goddamn accept yourself on a deep level, man. And then once you could get there, 
then you can get an understanding of who you are and then you can begin to work on yourself man and elevate your game you understand you can elevate your game look at this hoodie man this hoodie is all that man i just a little sean me and little sean designed this hoodie both of us designed this hoodie i done sold so many goddamn these hoodies man i sell i sell shit all over the planet man you understand ain't no sean g everywhere me and Sean, yesterday we were on our way to Brooklyn. You know, we we live, we live over here in Jersey, but he played baseball. We practicing with the Brooklyn Bonnies in Brooklyn. Shout out to all the Brooklyn Bonnies. We get on the train. We go to we go down by Harrison. We cut through Jersey City. Then we go to Manhattan, and then we sit on the train to Brooklyn. We get off the train. We go upstairs. We get on the bus, the 335 that run down Church Ave, right there by Nostra. I get on the bus, me and Sean get on the bus, I sit down, dude right across from me, he said, oh snap, he said, oh man, he said, yo, I watch all your videos, man, and he looked at little Sean, he said, yo, man, your father, man, your father, listen to your father, homeboy, what's my man name, uh, shout out to my man, what's, Philip, shout out to my man, Philip, from Brooklyn, man, you understand, he said, yo, Sean, he said, man, I watch all your videos, man. So it, 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 it was dope, man. It's dope. You know what I'm saying? I don't even be knowing these motherfuckers, man. Niggas be motherfuckers saying, yo, show what up. But I, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I be chilling. You understand? I be chilling, man. You understand? Look at my bed, man. I got to go get my bed shaped up. My bed money, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm chilling like Matt Dillon. Ain't robbing, ain't stealing. So listen, man. I gotta go pick Sean up from school. What time is it? Yo, truck of business. Yo, truck of business. You see the hoodie, man? Look how this shit glowing in the sun. How the sun beaming on me, man? It's 2:21. I still got time. I gotta go pick Sean up from school. Yo, if you want one of these hoodies, man, they two hundred dollars, man. So don't, if you got $195, you ain't got enough. Go get the other $5 and come back. Then you can get you one. Ain't no discount. I don't do like Macy's Wednesday. What's Macy's Wednesday sale or whatever? I don't do, ain't no discount on none of my stuff. Never. I put too much work in. I put too much time. I work too hard on this shit to be giving y'all a discount. You don't ask for a discount when you go to Foot Locker and buy $200, $300 Nike sneakers. You don't ask for no discount. Whatever come up on the register with the tax, they tell you $277.43. You go in your pocket, you pull it out, and you pay. Then, Sean G, I'm trying to sell something. You understand? I'm trying to goddamn sell. Yo, Sean, man, hook me up, man. Damn, man. Let me, yo, you know we go way back, man. Remember me back from 87, man? Yeah, I remember you, nigga, but you're going to pay full price for this. I ain't giving nobody no discount. No discount. Who that right there with the soul glow? RH. RH. RH got the soul glow. You see RH right there. Join the channel, man. RH trying to. He trying to make y'all look bad, man. He trying to make y'all look bad. That he, you know what I'm saying? He doing his thing. Y'all just on here window shopping, man. I don't care if you support me or not. I don't care if you support me or not. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I know how to goddamn kill a zebra. I can catch a wildebeest. I know how to dig out a warthog. I know how to goddamn survive out here. You understand? I live in the United States of America, the land of opportunity. Like Biggie said, you could go from ashy to classy overnight. You can start any kind of business you want. $30 trillion economy, and I can't make $100,000 a year. It's $30 trillion a year. If I can't do that, something wrong with me. And I'm a hustler. Goddamn, I look good. I smell good. Goddamn, think clear. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink beer. I don't smoke dust. I don't smoke weed. I don't sniff blow. I don't do no drugs, man. I don't do no drugs. 
Anytime you see me, I'm always in my right mind. That's why I win all the goddamn time. Ain't got no time to be getting high. The hell I got time getting high. I got to go pick Sean up from school. I got to make him something to eat. Take him to basketball practice. Take him to baseball. I got the goddamn edit video shoot. I got the mail out hoodies. I got the goddamn, you understand? I got the be fly. I got to put on the dope hoodie. I got the baseball car right here. I got to put gas in the car. I got shit to do. I got no time to be high. What the hell I got to be high? Never get high. I've been clean 32 years. I've been clean from drugs and alcohol for 32 years, man. I used to get high every day. Who that right there? Who that right there? Goddamn RH. RH. RH with another super chat. RH, thank you, man. Yo, I used to get high every day. I smoke weed every single day. I used to keep a pack of rolling papers in my wallet, Easy Waters or Bamboo. I used to keep a pack of Easy Waters in my wallet. So if you had some weed, but you ain't had no rolling papers, and you asked me for a rolling paper, I knew if I gave you the rolling paper, I'm gonna stay right there while you roll it. So if you gonna buy that joint up with me, I'm gonna get me a couple puffs, and I'm gonna get on for free. I'm gonna get on for free, cause I got the rolling papers and you ain't have none. I used to drink a quarter beer every day. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict, alcoholic. I used to sniff coke, all that, smoke angel dust, trip off of LSD, mescaline. That's why I'm crazy now. That's why I'm crazy like I am now. I got high for a lot of years, man. I started getting high when I was 12, 1981, 1981. I was going into the seventh grade, 1981, and then I, I stopped where well, I got beat into submission. The drugs beat me up. Drugs beat me up. Drugs destroyed my life. And weed was the gateway jump. That was the one I started with. By the time I damn near lost my life, I had to surrender. I waved the white flag to drugs. Drugs said, drugs said but I started getting high at 81. By 1990, I was 129 pounds, man. That's how fucked up I was. Drugs said, sure, come in. I said, man, I quit. I waved the white flag. Nah, oh, man, I'm through. No, no, no. I don't want no more. I quit getting high. I quit cold turkey. Ah! And I ain't got high in 32 years. As soon as I stopped getting high, my life got better. My shit said, damn. I started going, I started winning. As long as I got high, I stayed losing. I stay losing. Then I get clean from using drugs. Now I say I'm going to sell drugs. Wrong. Shoot Sean G in the dome. Dude. Went to jail. Dumb. Anytime I messed up with drugs, anytime I affiliated myself with drugs, I lost. I lost. I lost. I lost. I quit. I quit. I retired. I retired as a criminal. I don't do nothing wrong, so please don't come around me with no schemes, no scams, no, no, no nothing how we can come off. I don't do no crime. I retired as a criminal. I turned my card in. I said, I quit. When them feds got my ass, boy, they made a believer out of me. When the feds get you, boy, you might as well get ready for the get ready. Cause it's real. When they come, it's real. And when the feds come, listen, you gonna be all by yourself. When they come, everybody who knew you, once they find out the feds came to see you, man, your phone gonna go dead. The feds came to my office, the word spread around town, right? Cause I was a popular nigga, right? I've been money before YouTube. I was a fly nigga before YouTube. I was getting a lot of pussy before YouTube. I've, I've been cool before YouTube. I don't need, I was rich before YouTube. YouTube didn't make me, I was already fly. So when the feds came, the word got around town, 
My phone didn't ring for like two days. I said, damn, what's, it used to ring every day. I had to call at and I said, hello, this at and is my phone working? Is the service on? They said, yeah, it's sure, on, the service on. I said, well, ain't nobody calling. Man, once the feds come, ain't nobody gonna call you. They scared. They gonna leave you all by yourself. All those that think, that you think love you, all the people you think your friends and love you, let you get into some trouble and see, see uh, what happened. My mother told me, y'all know my mother? Y'all know my mother? George Gummy, she said, she used to tell me this all the time. She said, hey, Yasaka. Let me make Yasaka. Hey, Yasaka, hit that nigga with the wrench if you want to, man. Tell him to shut up. And if he don't shut up, hit him upside the head with the wrench. My mother told me. I was a little boy, man. She was told me this my whole life. She said, I want you to hear me and hear me good. She said, you gonna find your friends two times in life. You gonna find your friends two times when you sick and when you in trouble. Whoever come see about you then, them your friends. And she told the truth. She told the truth. Whoever, whoever come, whoever come see about you when you sick and when you in trouble, you treat them people with care, man. You, 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 you cherish them people, man. You cherish them people. You gonna find your friends two times now. Listen to me now. See down south, see them old black women from down south, after they say something, they say nah. After it at the end. Listen to what I tell you now. Hear me now. You gonna find your friends two times in life. When you sick and when you in trouble. Whoever come and see about you then, them your friends. And she could, them words could have never been more prophetic because, man, I knew people, man, I knew my whole life. I don't want to get into that shit, man. They just ain't no good. That's when you're going to find your friends, man. That's when you're going to find your friends. Yes, sir. The Compliment King, everybody go over to the Compliment King. Compliment King on YouTube. The Compliment King. Yep. If I'm your friend, this, this is me, Sean G. This is me, this, I'm talking about me. If I'm your friend, if I really dig you, if I really like you, I don't care what happened, what's going on, I'm coming to see about you. If I hear you in the hospital, or something like that, I'm not going to call, I'm going up there. Excuse me. Because I know how that shit feel. If you in jail, I'm going to put some money on your books. Or I'm going to go see your family and take them a couple of dollars. Here, here go $25, $30. Make sure you get this over to his man. You know what I'm saying? Get over to my man. Just make sure you send it to him. You ain't got no real friends, man. You don't find your real friends till you in trouble, till you need them, man. Yep, that's a true story. How long I've been on here? I've been on here 54 minutes. This ain't no jacket, man. This a hoodie, man. This ain't no jacket, man. I got two left, man. I got two left. I just went to the post office. Let me see what size this one is. I think I got a, let me see. Extra large. I 
I got two extra larges. I got two extra larges in here. Look at that joint right there. They $200 though. It might be too much for you. It might be too much for you. This is designer. This is a designer hoodie. And you know who's the designer? You looking at him. My clothes, my clothes better than, my clothes better than all of them Italian designers that you go by. My clothes better than all of them. My clothes better than theirs. My hoodie better than theirs. You know why? Cause I'm better than them. Here come another train. Y'all hear that train? Shout out to my nigga RH. Gabriella Dawson, what's up? Where you been at? Gabriella Dawson, where you been at? Y'all saw that dude yesterday, the black dude that worked for Pfizer? <clears throat> How many of y'all saw the video of the black dude that worked for Pfizer? He was telling them he was getting filmed undercover. And he was telling how Pfizer directed evolution, but really it's gain of function. How Pfizer, the drug company that makes the Joinsky joint, creates the virus. They keep, they keep creating different variants so they can keep coming up with new Joinsky joints to shoot you with. How many of y'all saw that? How many of y'all saw that? Put it up there if you saw it. His name, what's his name, Joshua? What's his name? Somebody put his name up there. What's that nigga name? R.H., you seen it? It was on Veritas. Here's, here's his name. Wait a minute. Jordan Tristan Walker. Y'all saw it? <clears throat> Jordan Tristan Walker. <clears throat> I'm going to put the link up for the hoodie now, man. That's the link for the hoodie. 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 If you can't afford it, you might not be able to afford this hoodie. You might not make enough money. Yeah, his name was Jordan Tristan Walker. Y'all saw that? How many of y'all saw that? If you go on YouTube and you type in Project Veritas, V-E-R-I-T-A-S, you'll see it was this gay dude, black, he, I don't know if he foundational black American or whatever, he might be mixed, he one of them high yellow, he light skinned like me. He was out on a date with a guy, he's gay. He's a part of the LGBTQ community. And he, he's an executive for Pfizer. Graduated from Yale. And he don't know he getting recorded. And he telling all the secrets about Pfizer. Y'all didn't see it? Did y'all see it? Ain't nobody saying nothing, but y'all scared to talk about it? You don't let these people get your heart? You don't want to talk about it? Don't let nobody take your manhood. Yeah, he, uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, man.
Yeah, the dude, man. You put the link up there, man. Here, go right here. Click on this link right here. They go to the link right here. Click on this link. Click, click on this link right here. Wait a minute. Hold on, I just had it. Go to the link right here. Click on this link right here, y'all. That's that link right there. I just put it up there. Click on that link. My man is up there. He's spilling. He's spilling all the beans. He's spilling all the beans about. He's spilling all the beans about how they are manufacturing, creating these variants so that they can go create the joint with him. So y'all go, y'all go check that out. I got my sneakers on too. I got Lil Sean sneakers on. Look at Lil Sean sneakers. Look at Lil Sean sneakers. Let me let y'all see Lil Sean sneakers. Check me out. Look at that right there. Look at that right there. Little Sean sneakers right there, huh? You see it? You see it? I wear my own clothes, man. I wear my own clothes. I wear my own clothes, man. I wear my own clothes, man. You wear white people clothes that don't love you. You wear they clothes, they be from Europe. All these crazy names. Michael Kors, Marc Jacobs, Gucci, Louis Vuitton. You wear all they stuff, they don't even love you. They be in the pedophilia, Satanism and all that. Y'all be walking around with it on because your perception, your self-perception so low, you wear it cause they, cause you want to look good in front of them. You weak, your mind weak. All right, I gotta get out of here. Did y'all see that link? Did y'all click on that link? Did y'all click on that link? I had the sneakers on the website, but I ain't gonna sell them though. It's too much, it's too much problems to get the sneaker made, get it shipped here and all that. So, all right, y'all, let me get up out of here, man. I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Peace.